Wow, hi guys. This place is packed, amazing to be here. Amazing to be in Riga. I arrived on Wednesday, everyone has been super hospitable. This conference, I come from Helsinki, which is the uh, home base of Flush, and uh, so we kind of, I know what a good conference looks like. I love, love Flush, and you guys are doing an amazing job here. So let's give a big hand for everyone who's been putting Jack 2 together. This is amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be um, sharing the original headline was six lessons. I cut it to four because I only have 20 minutes. So uh, four lessons learned growing, uh, you know, vault from zero to about 100 million in revenue where we are at the moment. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of, here, how many of you have heard of vaults? Cool, quite, quite, a, quite a bit. How many have actually uh, used the service? Nice, I'm impressed. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but yeah, this is what we do. As you can see on the st stage uh, or on the screen, uh, we're building this platform that connects three people. It's a customer who wants to pay money so that they can get great food where they want, uh, a restaurant who wants to earn money by making the food, and then the courier who wants to earn money by delivering said food when they want. And this, this is what we do. From the customer point of view, you basically open the app, see a list of restaurants, order what you want to your home or your work. Uh, currently, we are about and are exactly in 20 countries. Uh, we've grown in five years to this, this market. It's about uh, 9,000 restaurant partners, 20,000 courier partners. Uh, just two years ago, at this time, we were about a bit more than 100 employees. Now we are at more than 750. So uh, it's been quite a roller coaster. There's some things that we're proud of. People seem to really, for some reason, like the service. So we get like good uh, grades on Google Play and App Store. Uh, we've been able to raise some funding from some like, cool investors, got in some awards. Um, but I don't think any of this is really interesting. I just wanted to give you some context of, of where we are at the moment. But what is more interesting is like, what did we learn in the early days? We've learned a lot since, but I wanted to talk about the early days. Is this is a, a tech event where there's lots of startups, a lot of people who probably are building their own first thing. So some learnings, because like, this, is where we, this is how things look today from the customer point of view, but this is how things looked uh, basically five years ago or six years ago. Uh, this is a, a picture of the paper prototype uh, from early 2014. This is me and uh, uh, my good friend Mickey, who is our CEO, trying to figure out how can we find our way to 400,000 euros of, of investor money. And we were making the pitch deck on this street, basically, just getting some fresh air. Someone was walking past, and I, I asked them, that, can you take a picture? Because if we ever get this 400,000 euro investment, I want to remember this moment. Uh, this is a picture from our, our actually might this even work as a video? So this is uh, from our first um, office. We spent here six months with six people around this one table. In this video, we are developing some tablet games. <laughs> so yeah, so but what are some lessons we have learned on the way? So um, number one, it is not about the idea. This is something, sometimes I'm on a bus stop, someone comes to me and says, hey, Johan, hey, good idea with Vault. And if I'm busy, I say, hey, thanks. But uh, if I have time, I say, thanks, but actually it's not, it's not about the idea. Uh, this is also something, it's not only like my lesson learned, it's, this has been researched throughout. So there are five things here which are all important for a uh, startup, but there is an order of importance with these five. So idea, team, timing, execution and uh, funding. So what do you guys think, out of these five important things, which one by just research from hundreds of uh, very successful startups, which one is the most important? Just tell me the answer. But timing. Team, timing, execution. execution. <laughs> yes, that was well executed, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, like, again, these are all important. And often people say team because team is really uh, important. The investors can really, for example, value the team. They can look at the team and they can go, okay, these people have what it takes to make this happen and they can change direction when needed and that kind of stuff. But actually throughout research, we've learned that even more important than the team is the timing. Is this the right moment in history? Was one year earlier too early and is one year later too late? And, and the problem with timing is that you can never know if it's the right timing. Like, who knows at the moment, for example, with all these artificial intelligence startups, is this exactly the right moment uh, to be starting an artificial company, is it artificial intelligence company? Is it way too late? Or is the actual time going to be in, like, in 2030s, where we see the big breakthroughs? So no one yet knows. 
we've been speculating with smart homes or 3D printing or whatever, augmented reality, and some of these things, the timing went and it never happened, or for example, some of these things, it will, it will come soon. And when it comes to food, this was the timing that we were looking at. When we started in Helsinki in 2015, uh, in America, people were spending 1,400 billion a year on food. Half of that in restaurants, about 10% of that on delivery and takeaway, and digital orders was only 25 billion. So out of 1,400 billion, only 25 billion was digital orders. So in hindsight, you can say it was a good time to start doing something in the space because obviously the yellow circle is going to be growing. And when you make that digital ordering easy, you're actually making the whole delivery and takeaway bubble grow. I'm an extreme example myself. Like I order Volt once a day. And before Volt, I ordered like food to my home maybe like three, four times a year, maybe a pizza or something like this. So the whole delivery takeaway bubble for me has like grown like 100 fold. Uh, but we didn't have perfect timing. Like one year earlier would probably be perfect. Now we, and then we would probably be number one in the world. Now we are in a good spot and we are leading the way in many markets, but we're not, not globally number one, which we might be if we had a, just a bit earlier timing. Number two is team. Uh, this is our team, six people. Um, do not start a company with six people. Uh, it's like raising a kid with six parents. All of those people might be good parents individually, but when you have six people with this kind of, uh, co how do you say, like commitment and everyone wants to take part in every decision, you're going to have a lot of arguments, and, and we did. But we are still good friends, which is amazing, or like miracles. But what you can learn in a good way from, from, from what we did is that you want to have people with uh, complementary skills. So if you're starting a, st a business, do not start with three business students, for example. Rather have like one business person, one designer, one engineer. People who complement each other. Uh, third one, even third one is not the idea. It's third one is execution. This is just uh, one slide showing uh, on the right hand side, you can see Vault when we launched, and on the left hand side is a, another Finnish uh, company who tried to do the same thing. They had the same timing, they had a similar, like, very strong team. I would say that their execution was not as polished as ours, and then we kind of won, won the game. But uh, here's the kind of correct uh, answer of the order of importance. Idea is only number, f number four. Why idea is important, it's the inspiration that brings people together, but ideas it themselves, they don't have monetary value. There's not a marketplace where you can buy and sell ideas. It doesn't work like that. And then funding is the thing that kind of follows. If you have, the right, if you have a great team and you have a good execution for your idea, even though people don't know if it's the right time, but still funding will, will follow. Okay, lesson number two. Uh, show people something. It tricks them into giving you feedback. Um, what I mean by this? Well, here, first of all, this is the first ever version of the Volt logo. Uh, this is from our door in Helsinki. The name of the company, official name is Volt Enterprises. The Finnish registry would not only allow Volt, so we needed to add something to the name. Uh, we were thinking Vault Technologies, Vault Solutions. We went with Vault Enterprises because, because Mickey, our CEO, felt more strongly about that name. Um, later on, I, uh, two years later, I heard that Mickey had just watched the film Fifty Shades of Grey. And that film has grey enterprises. So Mickey thought that was kind of cool. And I did not want to learn that uh, information, but now I'm making you contagious with it as well. But hey, uh, if I would now ask you guys that, hey, let's design a better version for this logo, you know, not many people would be yelling ideas. So the trick is that when you want to develop something, you show something to people and you trick them into giving feedback. So if I showed you this and I asked, like, which one of these is you do you like and why, then all of you would have an opinion and you could say, well, I like this one, I like that one, I don't like that one. And this is exactly what we did when we developed, for example, the logo. And uh, here we went that the left-hand side is maybe a bit too heavy metal -y and the right-hand side is a bit too Bugs Bunny and uh, we went to this direction. And, and this, when we looked at this, we went like, okay, let's just combine these two. And as a result, we got this, which is the first hand-drawn version of the logo, which then evolved into this, which then evolved into this, which then evolved into the current one, which is this. The reason sort of difference between these two, by the way, is that uh, the first one is uh, not designed by the same version same person who designed the Instagram logo, and, and this one is. So you can obviously see this one is like, shit, and this is perfect. <laughs> um, third lesson, you should totally aim for like 
do not think of the whole world as your market and how am I make some how am I gonna make something that all these people wanna kind of use or buy or whatever. It's way better to just choose ten people and build something that those ten people will give you money for. And why I say give money for it sounds very cold and harsh, but when I say someone gives you money for, I mean that you have built something that is so useful or so delightful that a person wants to give you money so they can use it. It can be anything from a Netflix subscription to a like, uh, piece of cheese. Uh, but um, if you only take 10 people and you ask all these 10 people that are supposed to be your customers, and you ask them not any wake kind of ca questions like, uh, can you imagine being with the customer someday, or could you imagine using this product? But you will ask them, will you give me money for this the day we launch? And if those people like they are, I guarantee they will be all saying no in the beginning. Everyone will be saying there's a reason why they won't be giving you money when you actually ask this tough question, and then you ask why, and then you start making notes. With Walt, for example, our first version, when you sent in the order with the app, um, we didn't have a good kind of follow up on what's going to happen with your order, so people would kind of like feel a bit lost. So people would say, well, I don't know what's what's going on with my order. I don't know who's seen it and how many minutes and that kind of stuff. So we added stuff like notifications saying that a human being has seen your order, a living human being has seen your order. So people know, okay, phew, my order is safe. And then I would go to someone else and ask, will you give me money for this? And the person would say, well, you guys don't have this in this restaurant and that's where I want to order. So then we would add that restaurant and then we would go to the third person. And when you have 10 people who all say that, yes, I will give you money for this, on the day you launch. I guarantee there will be so many more than 10 people who will also be willing to give you, give, you become your customers. Uh, number four, um, change direction immediately if something big is not right. Um, this is what they call pivoting in, 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 in startup slang. So basically meaning usually when you have your first idea, that's not the thing that you're going to be doing for the rest of, of the company life. You learn new things and you understand what is the actual customer need. Uh, with Vault, uh, the kind of secret is that in the first few months when we launched, we didn't have home delivery at all. Our idea was that we wanted to be a pure tech company. And the idea was that we offered you this chance. This is the first ever Vault restaurant in the picture. It's a cafeteria called Cafe Centrale. So we had this idea that how you use Vault is that you place an order, and you pick it up yourself, or you eat at the table. And for example, how you would use the Cafe Centrale is that you order a cappuccino, and like five minutes before, and then you don't have to wait in line and tell your order and pay with the card, but you can just skip the line, grab the cappuccino, and go. And the same for like whatever takeaway food, or if you want to eat at the table, you can eat at the table. And the issue was that people really loved the app, but they did not, um, they did not uh, order enough. We got like five, ten orders a day, which was like really sucky. So we had to make a choice. We were. We had a few months left of runway, a few months left of, of like, uh, money in the bank. And we said, OK, let's do this big leap. And instead of only being a tech company, let's become a tech and logistics company. And let's start offering home deliveries. And uh, we had been thinking of doing it, but we kind of sped it up. And then we partnered with a company called Fedi. Uh, Fedi had some couriers in the road in Finland. And on this chart, you can see uh, how we grew from in the, uh, June of 2015. This every bar just shows daily delivery orders through Fedi couriers that people order with Vault. And we grew from zero to 100 daily orders. And then we go to zero. And what happened there at the end is that the, um, the CEO of Fedi just called us and told that through the personal reasons, uh, he, he shut down the whole company. So we lost our delivery operation in overnight. And we went to zero. Yikes. So what, what happened was these people came to help. This is Matthias, this is Tony, this is Yaniv. These three guys had been working with Fedi. And they came to us and they said that, hey, we heard that what happened. We would like to uh, start our own company. We start delivering for you. And these guys were great. So we told them, like, you know what? Here, have some stock options, maybe even a little bit of monthly pay. And you get the entrepreneurial experience, build this from within. And these guys started delivering, asking their friends to deliver, and that's what happened. We got our own home delivery operation running, and from here, what happened in the next five months was, was this. So, beginning, and then we grew 10x in, in five months, basically. This was like, we were growing on average like 13 percent week over week. And the fun thing is that if now, like in this picture, which goes from June 
2015 into March 2016, around this area we raised 10 million of, of funding, we started going to Sweden and expanding abroad, which all was made possible by this like, amazing growth. But the kind of humbling thing is that if you now look at this amazing first growth and if you look at compared to this, what's happened since, it's like just, it looks like a flat line. So we've been growing quite a bit since as well. So this is where we started. This was like um, basically five and a half years ago. This is four and a half years ago, three and a half years ago, two and a half years ago, year and a half ago. And then last fall, this is uh, from uh, Estonia. We had our whole worldwide kind of retreat there. So this picture has like 350 people. And we're now at 760 or something. So there's more than double this amount of people now with the company. And uh, the thing that really gets me out of bed after like a tough beginning and all kinds of roller coaster is exactly this, like the people that we have. So that's why I want to end with like showing you guys a video that shows some faces of the people at Vault. And uh, these are the people I, I spend my time with and who I love. So I just want to show you guys as well how they look like and, and, and what they say about Vault. <laughs> The most important thing when I think about what we stand for as a team, how people are excited about what we're building, and they want to really be a part of it and really own it and really take it somewhere. It's about actually growing a, an awesome business, and uh, it's just fun. The attitude is super good. Towards people, there's nothing uh, you want to miss out. Exactly. And it's full of heart. People love each other. It's about learning. It's about developing. We invest a lot of time in the, in the people who are mm. working uh, in Vault. Something I've learned from Vault is actually that this, uh, in this company you get shit done. First one is ownership. Uh, in Vault we don't wait for somebody to tell us what to do. The feeling of the responsibility of doing something by yourself. You have a task, but the way you do it is completely up to you. It's like growth that you don't really experience that often. Walt has taught me more than university or school ever. Willingness to learn and willingness to teach. Warm. Fun. Balanced. And ambitious. Supportive, energetic and blue. Fun, humble and ambitious. 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 I think ambitious, ambitious. is the word. Is, is, uh, we have like super ambitious, super talented people. Do not wait any minute. Buckle up and get ready and go. <laughs> yeah. You are never fully ready when you join Walt, but, but we have the best people to guarantee that you're gonna be ready. Just join Walt, you will never regret. Welcome and we will take this way together. That's it. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> So yeah, there's some uh, uh, recruitment propaganda for you. Uh, but yeah, I will wrap this up. I, I just want everyone to know here, like, if you're building something, if you if you want to, like, if you're curious to spar or like get feedback or whatever, like, I'm always available. I really enjoy like uh, being able to maybe share some of the learnings that we've had. So feel free to contact me. If it's LinkedIn, Facebook, if Instagram is your thing, if WhatsApp is your thing, uh, if you wanna, if you haven't tried the service, Vault uh, is the. the code that for new people you can get three free deliveries. It's also my personal promo code, so I also get free deliveries when you use that, so I'm, I'm using this chance. So that's it for me. Thanks, guys. Uh, it's been great.